everyone and welcome to Micro Monday. So we're making things a little bit differently this week. This week I've brought on a very special guest to talk to you guys about the science of baking. Hi, I'm Chad. I'm a chemistry graduate from the University of Wolverhampton and I'm going to be talking to you guys today about some chemistry behind uh, some simple baking that you guys can do at home. Sometimes when I bake, I like to use melted chocolate and there's a very special process that you can use to make chocolate harden up properly again once you've melted it. So Chad, why don't you tell us a little bit more about how that works? Tempering is a technique that's used in cooking which allows you to change the consistency of a material. So when we do this with chocolate, we make the chocolate harder and make the surface nice and shiny and smooth and glossy. So when we temper chocolate, we heat it up to let it melt. And then when you, when you melt chocolate, you break down the crystals inside, which lets the molecules go all free flowy when they're liquid. And then when you cool it back down, you let those molecules realign and make new crystal structures and that makes the chocolate in turn harder and gives it that nice shiny smooth surface. So when we temper chocolate it gives it a nice snap. So if we don't temper chocolate instead of a snap it kind of just bends apart. So whilst I've been stuck inside I thought I would make some delicious cupcakes and I made sure to follow the recipe, but for some of them, I thought I would test to see what would happen if you added too much flour or too much egg. So this cupcake has been made correctly. This one has far too much flour. And finally, this one, I've added a bit too much egg. So I'm gonna give Chad one of each of these and we're gonna see what he thinks. So uh, what do you think of this one, Chad? Hmm. This is a really nice cupcake, it's got a Nice, sort of fluffy, airy texture, sweet to taste. So that one was made according to my recipe. So uh, what do you think of this one, Chad? This one is uh, quite hard and crumbly, not particularly sweet, not good overall. There was way too much flour in that one. And what do you think of this one, Chad? So this one is very dense, spongy, very eggy. It tastes very eggy. Now with that one, I added a little bit too much egg. So I'm sure that's shown why you should follow recipes because if you add too many or too little of certain ingredients, it can completely change the texture and taste of what you're trying to make. Now we're gonna take a look at a sort of very retro old school dessert called a baked Alaska. So Chad, why don't you tell us more about what a baked Alaska is and why it's so special? So baked Alaska is a very special dessert. It's uh, got a core of cold ice cream surrounded by a hard shell of meringue. So there's a lot of science behind this actually. So in order to keep the core cold and to, but also bake the outer, outer shell, you have to make a meringue. So a meringue is made up of a whipped egg white, which incorporates air into the mixture. Now that air acts as a nice insulating shield against the heat. So when it's when you put the dessert in the oven, the heat bakes the outer core, the outer shell of the meringue, and keeps the core nice and cold. So that when you take it out, you can break into the shell and still get cold ice cream. So with this baked Alaska I made earlier, you can see the three distinct layers of insulating meringue the cold ice cream centre and the cake at the bottom. So here you can clearly see that the ice cream has remained cold because of the insulating outer layer of meringue. So we'll uh, see you guys soon. Thanks very much to Chad for joining me today and I'll see you guys for next week's Micro Monday. Bye! <laughs>